When you love your fish as much as I do, you can't pick favorites. I mean, you love them all the same. Just look at my guys in my African cichlid tank. Look at those colors. And their personalities are amazing. So I can't really pick favorites, guys. So there's not going to be a top five list. Sorry. Okay, I actually do play favorites. Stick around for my top five African cichlids for my 240 gallon African cichlid tank Alcatraz. Here we go. Let me just start off by saying this is an ever-changing list. It changes all the time. Some of the fish as they grow up become more likable and then others as they grow up become less likable. And day to day, the same thing happens. And you'll also notice that all the fish on this list are haps and that's because the peacocks have been driving me crazy lately. Let's kick this thing off with my number five pick, Moby, my blue dolphin Mori. I've had Moby for just over two years now and he's already yawning. I'm trying to keep it entertaining, man. Give me a break. Anyway, he's about eight inches or so, and males typically get up to about nine inches and maybe a bit larger, while females stay a bit on the smaller side. Because of their size and love for open water swimming, they should be in a tank at least six feet long, so about 125 gallons or larger. Both males and females will get this signature hump on their heads as they mature. Besides being called blue dolphins or blue mories, the hump has also given them the nickname humphead. Can anyone imagine why? But not all humps are created equally. Some are larger than others, and I actually suspect that Moby's hump is used for telepathic abilities, often trying to sway me into feeding him more often. Luckily, it only works on the weak-minded, so if I'm far enough away, it has no effect on me. A few reasons Moby's on the list is because of his eyes, which always seem so happy, and those huge, almost comical lips of his. Another reason I favor Moby isn't because of the hump. I actually prefer a fish without humps. Never cared for the flower horn because of his outrageous one. Looks weird. As I was saying, another reason I like Moby so much is because of his temperament. I've heard that males can get really aggressive, but I've never seen that with Moby. And he puts up a lot from those irritatingly aggressive peacocks that are half his size. I've only seen him chase other fish a few times, and the chase only lasts for a matter of seconds. Usually he's just always casually swimming around like this, not a care in the world. Now I'm feeding him to see if I can liven things up a bit, see Moby in action. He's not a terribly aggressive eater, but he does all right for himself. I've seen blue dolphins get a deeper shade of blue than he is. He might be a lighter shade for a number of reasons. He's actually peaceful and not a dominant guy in the tank, and that can do it. Also, pale sand can wash the colors out a bit, and that's what I have. Whatever the reason, he typically isn't much darker than this. All in all, it's pretty easy to like the blue dolphin. I mean, he's beautiful, has a great attitude, and both those things have earned Moby the number five spot on my list. Moving on to number four is a guy who acts sometimes more like a bird than a fish. Of course, I'm talking about my Malawi hawk, who's creatively named Hawk. The Aristochromus christii is one of the coolest predator haps you'll ever see. Even his more common name is cool, Malawi hawk. And what's even better is that he's called hawk for a reason. Two reasons, actually. First, he has a mouth that's shaped like a beak. He uses that thin mouth to reach into crevices and rocks to munch on imbuna fries. My baby! My baby! Second, he hunts like a hawk. I've only seen mine do this a few times. He'll swim above another fish he's studying and will flip on one side so he's looking down at the fish with only one eye. Hawk usually only does this when I add smaller fish to the tank. Probably pretty unsettling to the smaller fish. I think he's deciding if he's going to make a meal of them or not. If they go in for the attack, they slowly get close to the prey, then quickly swoop in and snap them up. You won't want to add fish that are too small in a tank with a Malawi hawk in it. Their mouths stretch open top to bottom and side to side, so it can get really tall and wide. I've heard of some full-grown hawks at about 10 inches, eating a fish 4 inches long. Probably not a very wide or fat fish it was eating, but still, that's pretty amazing. You know what else would be amazing? If you'd hit the like and subscribe buttons if you've made it this far into the video, it helps YouTube realize that something good's happening here. Hey, cool fact for you. This fish was given the name Aristochromus because people thought he looked like a Roman aristocrat. I've looked up images of Roman aristocrats and I don't see what the heck they were thinking, but still, pretty cool fact. I love Hawk's colors. His head is really blue. His anal fin is reddish, but it can get a lot more red from what I've seen from other hawks, and occasionally his red fin looks a lot deeper than it does right now. His body has that black stripe going down the full length, and that can fade if you have one trying to mate with another female hawk. He'll have a hard time finding one of those here though, so I think the stripe isn't going anywhere unless it disappears with dominance. He isn't really dominant right now, but he's tough enough that no one messes with him. He pretty much just minds his own business, like Moby does. 
He's just a really interesting and lovely fish, and watching him do that hunting routine as he glides above another fish is spectacular. All this solidifies Hawk at the number four spot. Coming in at number three is a guy whose name is a bit of a misnomer. He's a giant hap, but he only gets to be about seven or eight inches, so I don't even know why they call him that. But in these parts, he just goes by Sergio. Sergio, Sergio, Sergio. To me, this guy is just eye candy. Gorgeous fish with very, very long and beautiful fins. I love those fins. And his full name is actually Hematolopia oxyrhynchus. Try to say that quickly three times in a row. But he commonly goes by the giant hap. Now I'll be honest with you, I didn't even know for sure what kind of hap Sergio was until recently. See, I ordered a Nova Blue long nose over a year ago, and Sergio may look a little bit like a long nose, but he looks exactly like a giant hap. Special thanks to Angelo Michael for pointing this out to me. The vendor I bought him from is not very dependable at all. It was during COVID and it was hard to find African cichlids at all anywhere, so I took a risk. So I think I was sent the wrong fish. Have you ever ordered one fish and received another? How did that work out for you? Let me know in the comments. Usually it isn't an ideal situation, but in this case, it worked out because this guy is wonderful. If Lady African Cichlids wrote romance novels about male African cichlids, Sergio would be on the covers. And he never colors down from what you're seeing here. He could get more colorful in future, but he never gets less colorful than he is right now. Just check out that anal fin, so long and red. His blue scales on his body also have red edges, and his caudal fin has green, yellow, and orange sparkles. Gives the lady something nice to look at. He has a very peaceful demeanor, just like the other two halves I've already shown you, which is a huge plus. As with any African cichlid though, be aware that you can always get an aggressive version of whatever you have. And there usually isn't any way to tell if the maniac switch is gonna flip until they reach maturity. While he doesn't get as large as Moby or Hawk, he's still pretty big at around seven or eight inches, so that six foot tank is still in order here. With all of Sergio's good looks, there's no way that this guy settles in at less than my number three favorite African cichlid. This next guy moved from way down on my list all the way up to number two recently because he's just changed so much. I even did a full video on him that you can check out in the upper right corner. Of course, it's Gary, the Nimbochromus venustus. You're looking at my friend Gary, the Nimbochromus venustus. They also call the venustus a giraffe hab because of that outrageous pattern all over his body. Gary's cool for a slew of different reasons. First off, I'm amazed by his transformation over the past few months. I don't remember exactly when we bought Gary, but it was over a year ago. He remained mostly colorless except for the green and brownish body with the draft pattern on it. Then we started seeing some blue in his head, but only in the right light. That went on for about five or six months, and then, as if overnight, he reached about six inches in size, and he was showing a lot of blue in his face. His fins started growing out more, then in the last month or so, he started developing that awesome yellow blaze. For those of you newer to the hobby, a blaze is the yellow or color stripe usually starting around the mouth and moving back along the dorsal part of the fish. It's not unique to the giraffe hap. When the venustus gets larger and more dominant, and venustuses usually do become dominant, that giraffe pattern will start to get replaced by a blue-green color that I find absolutely gorgeous. My wife prefers the giraffe pattern, but I think we all know that the blue-green color is much more beautiful. Gary's a predator hab. He's also a piscivore, which means he has a special taste for other fish, usually mbuna fry. I feel like life is difficult for mbuna in Lake Malawi, with all these haps designed specifically to eat them. Can you imagine being a baby and having a whole breed of creatures designed to track you down and eat you? Pretty scary thought there. Gary's about 6 to 7 inches right now and should max out around the 10 inches that I mentioned before. He'll be a big boy. Hopefully he retains his peaceful demeanor because it isn't a rare thing for these fish to get quite aggressive. An aggressive fish of this size would be a nightmare for his date mates. Hmm. Maybe it wouldn't be such a bad thing to have someone raining down thunder on those peacocks with the attitudes I mentioned earlier. Here's something. I haven't seen Gary do this, but the Venustus is also an ambush predator. Pretty cool sounding, yeah? He pretends to be dead then waits for an unsuspecting smaller fish to get up close and personal and check him out. Then, surprise! Bam! I wasn't dead after all, but you are, my little tasty treat. Hey, a fish has got to eat, so don't judge him too hard. Now, some of you may have seen my short videos about this big silver guy here called a uh, Fursicata. Mine's name is Ferk the Second, and he's too slow to get enough food with the other ravenous fish in the tank. He's also not on the smarter side of all the fish that I have, so I have to hand feed him huge pellets. Watch as I try to get Ferk the second to take them from my fingers. Not doing too well. 
not doing too well. And now, here's Gary. He gets it, but he isn't done. Look, he keeps on coming after the next pellet. I keep pulling back, but he keeps coming back after it. He's such a better eater than Ferg the Second. In my opinion, Gary's just awesome all around. He'd be my number one. I mean, if it weren't for this next guy coming up. If you're not new to the channel, then you probably already know who holds the top spot. It's a fish who needs no introduction, but I'm gonna give him one anyway. It's the venerable Zebra Oblique Adens, who goes by the name Zeke. This here's the man. His scientific name is up there in the left corner, and I'm not even gonna to try to pronounce it, but I can pronounce Zebra Oblique Adens. I can also pronounce Zeke, which is the name my wife gave him when he was about three inches long. He came from Imperial Tropicals and was also included in the first batch of African cichlids I've ever had. He's over two years old now and measures about six inches. That should be about it since they usually only get about five or six inches long. He has those deep black stripes along with a nice yellow body topped off with that glowing orange spot. He also has what I call war stripes, the black lines underneath his eyes. They get deeper when he's feeling like the ace he is. Zebras are known to be somewhat aggressive, but I haven't really seen that too much with Zeke. One thing I love about him is how he just goes about his own business. But if he gets pushed too much, he'll turn on some fire and go after whoever's trying to bully him around, eventually. I've seen this quite a few times, and once he decides he's going after them, they always back down. This is my absolute favorite fish story. When Zeke first arrived, he settled in as tank boss. Now Zeke's a good guy, not bothering anyone, but definitely the boss. Another fish, a Python Island Hap, decides he's going to start chasing everybody around. So this guy is on the right side of the tank, and Zeke here is on the left with everyone else. They're all corralled together. Like I said, he's pretty mellow unless pushed too far. Anyway, I don't like what I'm seeing, so I capture the Python Hap and put him in a penalty box, or breeder box, and keep him away from everybody else. I go to the movies and come back a few hours later. In the dark, it looks like he's still in the penalty box, but as I get closer, I start to get my mind blown. The Python Island Hap doesn't have stripes. Wait a minute. That's Zeke in the penalty box. And he's alone. I can't believe me eyes, Commissioner. What must have happened is Zeke wanted to teach this guy a lesson and somehow jumped into the box. A trick since the box was at the top of the tank. And the demon that was in there didn't like what Zeke was giving him, so he got out the same way Zeke got in. So I let Zeke out and he goes right after that Python Hap again. I knew right then and there that he was the greatest fish that ever lived. And he still is. I don't see him as the tank boss anymore, but he's not afraid of anybody. He's a strong, reserved fish who can dish out a good fight when necessary. He's my Clint Eastwood fish. Uh, young Clint Eastwood, not the super old Clint Eastwood. And that's why he's my number one. Not only my number one African cichlid, but the absolute best fish I've ever owned. Well, that's my list as it stands today. Uh, what did you think about my top five? And also, what are some of the favorite fish that you've ever kept? Let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.